Hello, right, we are going to have a go at making a Fauvist portrait. So, um, Fauvism was an art movement that was ooh, around about 110, 115 years ago, probably uh, a bit more, maybe 120 years ago, um, and it started in France. And um, uh, they were called by a critic, I think, uh, the uh, Wild Beasts, which is where the word Fauve comes from in uh, in French, it um, translates as wild beasts, and uh, and he said that because he th he thought their use of colour was wild, and it does look pretty wild, doesn't it? Especially when you see it on a portrait uh, here. So here are some examples. Um, so you've got these uh, these two here are by Matisse, and this one is also uh, this one is by Andre Deran. This one is by Sonia Delaunay, um, and so these were some of the major Fauvist artists at the time. So as you can see colour in the faces um we uh, we've got a really free use of colour so you can see greens you can see reds i can see pinks and oranges um and here as well uh, and all sorts of colours here in this face um and often the use of strong outlines so here you can see strong outlines in um in the eyes and the eyebrows and the nose and lips you can see it in all of them actually so I suppose those are the things that we're looking for if we're going to try and create our own Fauvist art, those strong, uh, stronger outlines in some of the features and a really bold use of colour. Uh, so what I've got here are some oil pastels. Now, um, we're going to kind of concentrate a little bit on trying to use some complementary colours. So complementary colours means colours that go together very well. And the complementary uh, colours are orange and blue. And this is scientific fact, it's not opinion. It means uh, when they go together well, if you put, uh, and there's another pair here, we've got um, uh, purple and yellow. And if you put these two together, so if you put um, the colour purple next to the colour yellow, it makes the yellow more vibrant and it makes the purple more vibrant. Um, okay, and you've also got uh, red um, and um, green. Okay, I've got black here for those stronger outlines as well. But to be honest, um, I've got... If you can see, I'll move them in there. We've got loads and loads of um, uh, oil pastels. And if I were you, I'd ask your teachers to get loads and loads of them because there's never a full set, is there? Uh, there's some empty, and some of them have even got just the same colour um, in the whole set. So, yeah, uh, as, uh, the more the merrier with the pastels. We're trying to avoid colours that the foes didn't use, so you don't see much use of brown. Black is used more for outline. Uh, there's not that much of d use of dark colour, mainly in the hair, I would say, and sometimes in the clothes. Um, okay, so what you need then is a portrait to work on, first of all. So what I've got here is a portrait that we've done um, last time in one of my other videos about drawing a self-portrait. So there it is, and what I've gone and done is, as you can see, I've made some photocopies, which have turned out a bit lighter. They just naturally turned out. That way you can change the, um, you can ask your teacher to change the lightness, the darkness um, on it. And um, so what we're going to do, because I've copied it a few times, it's, it gives us more freedom to experiment. We don't have to be really precious about our original drawing. If we, if we love our portrait draw, drawing, we can just leave it in our sketchbooks and it'll just stay there. And so we don't need that anymore. We can just use photocopies. And um, I've, uh, it, it's a good idea to photocopy a few. I've photocopied it four times, and that gives you some freedom to try out different colours. Um, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put the examples of the Fauvist portraits uh, next to, next to my version. In fact, I'll just swap them around. Next to my version, and I'm going to use that. I'm going to keep using that as my reference, uh, as my guide to try and kind of copy some of their ideas. Okay, so I'm going to start, I think, with this one. I find this one a little bit easier here, just because it looks like this green here, probably doesn't look green on the video, but it is, this green here, um, it makes it look like the face is a bit in shadow. And even though my portrait doesn't really have much in the way of shadow on it, I can just put that in. I can just kind of um, do kind of half of the face or this side of the face green um, and see if I can get it to work uh, in a similar way. Um, okay, so... I'm going to start with the green. Now, you can see that the colour is quite, um, it's quite blocky. So you, you don't get to see lots of little lines or dots or anything like that. So I'm going to just try and shade in and make it quite blocky. Okay. I don't have to be too precious about it because I've got lots of photocopies. 
so I can just be quite free with it. So I keep looking at this and I'm trying to put the green where the green is in this portrait. The green I'm using here looks a little bit lighter. If you can find other greens, then why not use them? I can see there was a bit of shadow under the eye in my original portrait, so I'm gonna, gonna put that green right under the eye like that. Okay, I can see there's some kind of pinkish colors creeping in there as well. So if you've got a flesh color, great. If not, uh, you might have to swap it for orange. In fact, I am gonna swap it for orange because it's Fauvism. We're gonna be a bit bolder with what we're doing. So I'm gonna put some orange around there. Similar to how it is. Be careful when you overlap um, some of the um, oil pastels because I don't know if you can tell there, it will start, it'll start to make a second color. It'll start to blend and mix. And some of them when they mix will make brown. So orange when mixed with green will make brown. So you don't want too much of that brown color on there. Okay, there's a bit around there. Okay, and so that's basically the approach. I'm looking for where the lighter areas are and I'm putting some of that lightness in. I might I might blend um, some of the warmer colors together to make this orange a bit lighter. So I'll show you what I mean. I can put a bit of yellow into it, uh, put it next to it and over it and it'll start to make that bit lighter and it'll kind of make it a little bit more interesting. But as you can see, there wasn't much blending, was there? The green just bumps up against that kind of... Um, or sort of peach sort of colour that Andre Daran has been using. I want to now take a look at um, this dark, much darker area here. So it looks like he's used a bit of black there. Um, so I could use black. Now, one thing you'll find with oil pastels is that they're they're really thick. There's that um, there's no point to them like a pencil. So it forces you to be a little bit freer with them. You can't do lots of fine detail. Um, so I'm just going to have a go. You know, if this doesn't work, it's okay. I've got more photocopies. I can have another go. So I'm just going to outline the eye a little bit there. And the eye ball. And it might look a bit weird. It might look a bit bold. And look, it's already starting to look a bit more like that one there. I think there's no problem with that. There we go. So I'm going to put that in there. And you can see that sort of strong shadow there. The eyebrows are strong as well. So we'll put the eyebrows in nice and strong. And I'm gonna try and do this strong shadow that I can see here on the Andre Daram picture, just by the nose. And I can see he's outlined bits of the nose as well. So I'm gonna try and do the same. areas there with their nostrils. I'll try that as well. Okay, it's already, I think, I hope you do too, starting to look like quite an interesting portrait. And it can help if you're not sure you're trying to do detail with something really thick like this big thick oil pastel. If you just do in the beginning just a few, just a few small lines. Okay, so where the lips meet, where they join together, I know that's quite dark there. Um, you could put kind of like a black dark line in there. Um, okay, for the hair, um, I could go black. It's black there. Um, it looks blackish around there. Um, we've got lighter colours here. I think I'm going to go for purple. I think they were called the wild beasts because they used wild colours. And I want to be a little bit more wild with the colour I'm using. So purple. Now, you could choose, I've got a highlight there, could choose to leave that highlight in. Might be effective. Leave it in, see what you think. So I'm not gonna put purple over that bit. If you don't like it, color over it. I might, do you know what I might do? I might use a complementary color. If you remember before, the complementary color of purple is yellow. So I put yellow into that gap there. Ooh, I quite like that. Blend it in a little bit. Oh yeah, not bad. Okay, um, so I've got some purple there. Um, I think I'm gonna, it's darker around here. So I'm gonna make it even darker around there. I'm gonna get blue on top of that from the same sort of cool color family there. 
not a warm colour. Okay, if I don't like that, it's not dark enough, I'll get black involved. So good, another good thing about oil pastels is that they can be layered one on top of the other and they can be blended together. Okay, so this is what I've got so far and I'm pretty pleased with it. It, uh, it really does um, look uh, like it's full of colour, uh, like these versions, and also um, I've gone dark around the eyes, like these uh, um, uh, fovis fovis portraits are, and yeah, so I think it's uh, it's a really good start. But I could do one, and then I could get another sheet of paper, another photocopy, and I could carry on. I could try a different one. Um, but before I do, um, I just want to talk about one one or two of the things that. Um, Work that I thought worked well and some that didn't. So um, I think this works well where I've blended uh, some colours together a little bit. I've left a white highlight there. I don't think the ears, the ears kind of look like robot ears. I think those colours haven't worked very well for me in the ears. Um, I like how this bold black line works. I did find that if you start to, and I'll do a bit, I did a bit of it here. If you start to, um, um, go over the black with a lighter colour, it will just start to get muddy. I'll show you what I mean. It'll just, it'll kind of just do this, and then you'll end up with that dark colour stuck to the lighter colour, and then it will start make, making kind of dark marks elsewhere that you might not like. So it went a bit wrong around the eye here, and it, you see I was going over it and over it, and it takes ages before you get rid of the, that darkness again, if you don't want it there. Um, yeah, so that didn't work very uh, well. I, the same thing down here, where I went over this black outline here, and look, it kind of starts to smudge it, and it all starts to go a bit wrong. You have to go over it. You can fix it just by going over it and over it with that lighter color um, again. Um, I think um, bits where I've blended together some warmer tones, like red and yellow and orange, has worked uh, pretty well as well. I could blend it some more there. Yeah, and um, um, yeah, also uh, one thing I've noticed about Fovism is that um, even though they're using all these um, uh, bold and vibrant colors, um, it still looks like, if, especially on this one, um, I think, and on these two, the nose comes forwards and the eyes are still sunken back in the sockets, just like a real face would be. Um, so I think um, uh, Andre Daran in this picture in particular has done that very, very well. So that's something to think about. And so what, I've, uh, what I thought I'd needed to do was to look at my original uh, portrait here and look at the bits that should be darker. So I can see that underneath the nose there, it should be a bit darker. So I need to take a darker tone and so what do I mean by that? Well, definitely not uh, yellows and oranges because they're lighter tones. I could use this green because I've already got the green for some of the shadow around here. And I could start to put some of that green under the nose, at the bottom of the nose here. And then suddenly the nose should start to look a bit more like it's coming forward. And that's the, the filtering there, that bit uh, that joins the bottom of the nose to the lips. So yeah, you might think about putting, using a darker tone, not black, but a green or a blue would do it, I would say, wherever you find darker tones on your picture. Um, the lips, I'm not quite happy with that. I'm gonna try and blend that black in a little bit more. Hopefully that'll look a bit better, a little bit maybe. Um, you might want to try and put one or two white highlights in. If I was going to do that on the lips, for example, I'd just, just press hard like that and just do, do it like that. And then I just blend in with a bit of the red. So it doesn't look like a bit of toothpaste on the lip. <laughs> okay, something like that would do. Um, okay, so yeah, that is pretty much it. I'm trying to look at where... Uh, the shadows are um, on my original portrait and I'm trying to put shadows in similar places. I haven't gone really heavy on the black. I've just used a bit on one side uh, of the nose. And for the other shadows, I've mainly used green. But like I say, you could use blue. Blue would work as well or dark red would work as well. 
um, for something like that. So yeah, I'm happy with that one and I'm gonna stop there and then I would try another one. In this version, I'm just gonna put blue in all the original shadowy areas of my face and then choose other colors after that. Right, that looks all right so far. So then complementary color of blue is orange. So I'm gonna put some orange in. I'm not gonna go over the edges. I'm not gonna blend them together because it makes brown. Now you might want that in yours. You might want some brown in yours, fine. But I don't want it in mine, so I'm not. Oh, I've missed a bit of shadow here. In the nose. Right, at this point, I'm going to take a look at some Fova stuff. Look at all the colours in this one here. I'm going to work in a bit of red. This Sonia Delaunay one, brilliant. Put a bit of red on this side. I have to be honest, sometimes I get a bit confused with using a lot of colour. So... It would be fine to stick to two colours. This would be absolutely fine if this was just orange and blue. It'd still look good. Having said that, I'm going to put yellow in. <laughs> now, yellow is a colour that I don't mind blending. And look, this yellow was quite dirty, see? It had lots of other colours on it. So what you could do is at the side or on another piece of paper, you could just clean it by rubbing off. those bits that you don't want on it. That way you'll get a cleaner colour. So it's a good idea to look at the oil pastel first and check what's already on it, what's already been mixed with. And if you don't like what it's been mixed with, that's when you just need to clean it at the side. A bit. Okay, good thing about putting yellow down is it's a nice bright and light colour. You can put darker colours on top. It's harder to put lighter colours on top of darker colours that take you longer to make that area light. It's easy to make different areas dark, it's harder to make them light. So it's a good idea to put your lightest colours on the white paper and you'll get a nice bright colour. Gonna blend it here so it becomes a bit green. Yeah, looks all right. Gonna blend that yellow here. See, if you blend the orange with the blue, it'll go brown, but if you blend the yellow with the blue, it will go green, which I don't mind. Right, only other bit I haven't done yet is the hair. Right, my darkest tone is purple here, so perhaps. I need to do that again for the hair. Or I could find another colour that's also really dark. Yeah, I found a dark blue. I could use a mixture of the purple and blue for the hair. The important thing being that I've just got a dark tone in the hair. Okay, so you can see that's beginning to take shape. Um, I could try with a light tone in the hair. Here you go just to see what it's like. And it's fine with the highlights, but look, I'm putting yellow over the photocopy dark bit and you can still see that grayness coming through. So we don't want that. We do want it to be darker. So we don't have to look at all that grayness coming through. From the original photocopy. Okay, I can see that there needs to, needs to be darker either side of the nostrils there. So I'm gonna get that dark. There we go. Dark purple, put that back in. All right, yeah, not bad. It uh, needs to be a little bit darker here underneath the nose. Just looking at the tones there. Okay, not bad. Some of that lightness back into the nose. 
Um, okay, so again, I've used yellow for a highlight in the hair, but there you go. There's another example, and it looks quite different to this one. But they've each got their really positive good points about them and there's bits that you might change about them. And it's that constant process of evaluation of thinking to yourself, what would I change? What can I improve? What can I make better? I can see it looks a little bit wonky here. I'm gonna make it more of a straighter line going up here to get the shape of the nose right. So it's constantly looking at my original self-portrait here, where the shadows are and where the tones are, uh, where the light bits and the dark bits are, and trying to make light bits and dark bits in just lots of bold colours on here. I think it does look a bit scribbly in places, so where I can see white bits, I probably want to just put a bit more colour on it. You can make that colour really nice and bold. Just put a bit more on it. You see here, I've gone fast, and that's fine. But once I've decided, yeah, I love that colour there, put a bit more on, make it nice and bold strong and vibrant and that way it won't look so scribbly so around here it looks a bit scribbly as well there you go a bit more bold here okay and we just keep refining it we keep looking and keep trying to make sure that we've got the light bits light and the dark bits dark So to finish off, I'm just going to compare the tones in the coloured versions to the tones in um, the uh, sketchbook version. So I can see, I'm also going to compare it to um, the Fauvist um, artwork that we've got and see what's wor what works well and what needs to change. So first of all, I can see I've used really dark tones in the eyes and shadows here. And I think that works really well. It's not so dark there. So what I could do is either start a new one and change that, or I could just darken that one. So I'm going to get the, in fact, before I move straight to black, I'll go to, I've found a dark blue here. I might just go to a dark blue. And just do one of the eyes and see how that looks. Yeah, I like it already. And I can see that the nostrils need to be a darker tone as well. Oh, that line across the middle of the lips. Try and get that a bit darker. Yeah, I already prefer it. So we're constantly evaluating, and that means we're just looking at what's worked well and what we could improve. And we're comparing the ones we've got already, looking at what we like, um, and how could we use that in other part in other pictures or other parts of the same picture. And what hasn't worked so well and how could we change that i don't like it so much around here it's lighter there so i'd like to make it lighter it's harder to make it lighter because it's already dark but all i can do is try and if i go over the top of it with the yellow it will get lighter you could also put white on it as you can see it's probably it's already getting a bit lighter Yeah, you could also put white on it and that should lighten it a bit. Let's try that and see if that works. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's a bit better like that. Okay, so yeah, I think that's made a bit of an improvement. And like I say, it's just a process of you keep looking, keep comparing uh, what you've got. You've got your original uh, drawing, You've got the first version that you did and the second version. Maybe it'll be a third version. You can compare to uh, the Fauvist startworks works and see what you might need to change. So as I say, I keep on changing things and um, uh, comparing the tones and making sure that the dark bits are dark and the light bits um, are light. So you can see it's light on the nose there. Um, you can see that it's, uh, there's some... Uh, some lightness on the forehead and some on the cheeks, a bit around here, a bit on the chin, um, but most of the other areas are quite dark. A bit of shadow on one side of the face 
and lighter on the other side of the face. So you could keep tinkering with it. What I would say is don't use too much black. Black is good for um, for outlines and if you've got dark, uh, if your portrait has dark hair, then yeah, by all means, you could use black in the dark hair. But I wouldn't use uh, black too much on the face. So you can see we did just a bit here for outlines and a little bit of shadow. Um, okay, so good luck with it.